Hey everyone, thank you so much for jumping on our <laughs> national call, Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice. We're ready to rise. Uh, we're just under 10 days out to September 8th, the national mobilization. And I wanted to just quickly welcome everybody that is joining us tonight, whether it's by phone or whether it's on the call itself. Um, please feel free to introduce yourself into our chat box. Um, I'm gonna send a couple of suggested intros, your name, your organization affiliation, if you have one, um, preferred gender pronouns, and the location that you're calling or video streaming in from. And um, we'll go ahead and start very, very shortly. And just as a reminder to folks, my name is Annalisa. I'm People's Climate Movement Campaign Coordinator. Um, really, really appreciate you all taking the time to be on the call. I wanted to remind folks that we will be muting everybody's lines. Um, so if you have questions or you just have thoughts or other things that you'd like to share, please feel free to drop them into the chat box and we'll be doing our best to respond to them. Um, and uh, we also will have a Q&A section later, so no worries about that if you're on the phone. Um, feel free to uh, respond to any, uh, reply to us with any questions in an email. Um, just because of our tech capabilities, we're going to be keeping chats uh, the priority tonight. Um, but we definitely do want to encourage participation. Um, so just want to remind you all to just hang tight on the phone, reply to us on email, and if you're on your laptop or computer, to go ahead and chat your um, name, your org affiliation, your preferred gender pronouns, and your location into the chat box. And um, we'll be starting in just a couple minutes. Um, I want to start shouting out folks. Um, I'm actually calling in tonight from Modesto, California, although my home base is in the Bronx in New York City. I um, want to give a shout out quickly to Emily from 350. Dot org, who's calling in from Oakland, and you all will be hearing from our facilitator shortly, um, Adelita Serena from Mothers Out Front, um, and she'll be giving you an intro to the other speakers on the call tonight. But really excited to have, looks like we have someone else from California, from Pacific Palisades, somebody from San Francisco, um, Rich from Hackensack, New Jersey, Really, really excited to have everybody from across the nation be joining us tonight. So thank you all once again. Um, it's getting, we were talking amongst ourselves earlier about the craziness right now that we're all in uh, major campaign mode and event prep mode. Um, it looks like uh, Amy is having some issues with audio. Um, so Emily, I don't know if there's any way to test that or if there's any advice that you have about that. Um, other folks calling in from Minnesota, um, Massachusetts, got Kay from the Sierra Club, Jeanette from Medfield. Um, oh, a quick shout out to Ingrid, who's also from People's Climate Movement and monitoring the chat. Um, and Roberto gave a quick shout out from Illinois. Um, reminder to folks, if you're not hearing me, to please turn up your volume. We're about to start the call. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody's tech issues are sorted out. Um, really, really appreciate folks bearing with this. Sometimes the Zoom is really awesome and easy to function and sometimes a little bit trickier. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Adelita, who's going to be facilitating the rest of the call this evening. So Adelita. I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to you. Thank you so much, everybody, for being on the call with us. And um, we're excited to jump into now. Hi. Hi. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Adelita Serena. I'm with Mothers Out Front, a grassroots movement of mothers and allies mobilizing for a livable climate for all children. Um, just, you know, I would like Annalisa said, we're all uh, have our hands full, you know, with our campaigns, getting ready for the big march. So um, just wanted to mention uh, one, our, our panelists, and um, starting with Sherry, Sherry Poitlin uh, with Water is Life. Um, she actually cannot be with us. And so I really want to acknowledge her and her efforts right now out in Louisiana. 
uh, with the BioBridge pipeline and, and she's out on the front lines. And um, I think it's really important to, to acknowledge her efforts and, um, you know, she wishes she could be here, but it is dealing with that. Um, Lucas Zucker with Policy and Communications, Director, Central Coast Alliance, United for a Sustainable Economy. Um, an, another panelist, Roberto Jesus Clack, Associate um, and Director of Warehouse Workers for Justice, and Ananya Singh, Sierra Student Coalition. Um, thank you all for being a part of the panel. Um, well, just real quick to mention, we'll have more time for questions as we move along the agenda here. And we'll follow up with links and resources, uh, with emails, and um, please yeah, access that chat box on the side for, for entering any questions. Um, we're going to continue. I I'm trying to keep track of the time. <laughs> So uh, we're just going to move along, but um, so I, I just want to kind of real before we move on, just kind of just acknowledge why we're all here. And um, one, you know, it's, it's going to be the one year anniversary for Hurricane Maria, and also it's the one year anniversary for Hurricane Harvey. And I want to acknowledge um, the the victims and the survivors and those that have lost their lives or homes and the communities that have, you know, taken a direct impact of climate change and have maybe um, have had to, you know, move on to other areas or are struggling and trying to reestablish themselves where they are. And so just wanted to acknowledge why we're all here um you know to fight climate change and, and take take a stand now there is no other time um i know why i'm here you know i'm here because here in california you know we're dealing with uh the fires and every summer it's it's fire season my son personally um my i have two sons and one is an athlete and he is in football training all summer long in triple digit heat and um, is having to breathe in, you know, particulate matter. His developing lungs are probably, you know, going to be impacted. Um, and they're, they're out there in peak heat. And I've seen with my own eyes them suffer with heat illness on the sidelines. Um, and it's just, it's not just him. It's, all the other children out there um and this is something that i have to you know deal with every summer so and just all year long you know so i know why i'm here and i i hope you all um remember the reasons you're here too and just acknowledge you know those that are dealing with the hurricanes and the the, the floods and here in california the drought um and so just, you know, wanted to take a moment real quick to acknowledge those things and honor our comrades and friends and families, uh, especially those that fought in front of Standing Rock and, and Flint, you know, everybody uh, along, you know, around the world and in our nation. And just to remember that this is, this is happening now. There is no other time. And so it's, it's just a critical time and I really thank you for being here. I really acknowledge all of the struggles you're all currently enduring wherever you're at. So thank you. Um, and I just kind of want to quickly move along. I'm sorry if I took too much time, but I just wanted to make that acknowledgement before we move into the next section of the agenda. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to our, our next uh, speaker which is um, going to give us an anchor action update from California. So I'm going to pass it on to Lucas Zucker, who is the Policy and Communications Director out of Central Coast Alliance United for a Sustainable Economy. So Lucas, um, yeah, thank you and welcome. And look forward to your update. Thank you, everyone. Uh, super excited to be here. 
Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, why my organization, CAUSE, uh, is bringing a busload of youth leaders up from our community in uh, the central coast of California up to San Francisco uh, to march for climate jobs and justice. Um, as many of you know, California is facing devastating wildfires like never before. Actually, six of the largest 20 wildfires recorded in history have happened just in the last year in California. And uh, this week, our state put out an assessment projecting uh, a 77% increase in wildfires by the end of the century. Uh, but what isn't really being talked about is that this is really most affecting uh, immigrants, farm workers, other working class people, people of color on the front lines. Um, here in my area in December, we, we went through what was then the largest wildfire in California history. Actually now less than a year later, it's already been topped by another fire in Mendocino. Um, we had some of the worst air quality ever recorded in this area. Uh, while public health warnings said not to go outside without a special respirator mask, um, here in Ventura County during the fires, we had thousands of farm workers who really had no choice but to labor in the fields picking strawberries um, under extremely dangerous choking smoke. Um, we had folks who developed asthma and other lung conditions as a result of that. Um, and Cal California has half the nation's farm workers. We've got some of the most labor intensive industrial agriculture um, in the country. Um, we also, our emergency warnings weren't translated into Spanish for the first 10 days during the, the most crucial evacuations, warnings about unsafe air quality and water quality, um, even though one in three members of our community speak Spanish at home. Um, we also had thousands of folks who were uh, affected by lost work, um, people like housekeepers and landscapers of homes and buildings that were burned down or evacuated. Um, but uh, folks may not know that undocumented immigrant uh, workers and families are, are shut out of federal assistance uh, programs for disasters like FEMA. Um, and so our communities were really on the front lines and immigrants rights organizations like mine in the area worked to pass out um, thousands of protective masks in the fields, uh, push for translation of emergency information, uh, and raise over a million dollars to provide relief to immigrant families excluded from federal aid. Um, so that's really why you know, we're, we're pushing for systemic solutions. Uh, we really need systems change and our community has also been organizing to keep fossil fuels in the ground and lead a just transition away from this extractive economy. Uh, thousands of people um, were part of this successful effort over the last four years to stop the Puente power plant from being built in Oxnard, California. Um, all the power plants in our region are located in Oxnard, uh, which is 85% people of color uh, and has one of the highest asthma rates in the state. Uh, and when another fossil fuel power plant was proposed, the youth of our community really led a movement to shut it down uh, and force NRG, which is the largest operator of power plants in the entire country, um, to back down. And now, now our area is building solar power and battery storage instead to replace that project. Um, we're also now uh, in the midst of fighting a proposal to, uh, to put 750 uh, oil wells in, in the community of Santa Maria. Um, which is a 75% Latino community uh, where our agriculture, livelihoods of farm workers, and our drinking water and health are dependent on our groundwater, um, which we threatened by the extreme oil drilling through our aquifers to get at it, get it this uh, dirty oil. Um, so our, our folks are, are out here uh, on, on the front lines uh, working for system change, uh, and so that's why we're, we're taking that, that fight with us to, to Sacramento. Uh, this is a moment where, uh, where certainly across the country, um, but definitely definitely here in California. Uh, we're, we're seeing this turning point and we're building power, um, particularly among frontline communities, communities of color, working class communities, um, to fight for an end to fossil fuels um, and, and climate justice. And, and so um, we're, we're really seeing this as, as a moment where we can flex that power um, and show, show everything that we've, we've been building here. Um, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing all of you in San Francisco. Um, and, and helping us to build this movement. Thank you. Um, and, and if you want to share any link, um, throw it in the chat box. Um, thank you, Lucas, uh, for that, that strong update. Uh, we're going to go ahead and um, move it along. Um, also, Annalisa, if, you, if I forget to put a link, can you put it in the chat box? <laughs> Um, so just want to congratulate, you know, and thank the California leadership team for their great work, um, doing a great job, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and move it along here. Um, um, also, um, before I move on, I, I'm supposed to ask if you guys have any questions, and I'm going to continue to ask that. 
um, to put it in the chat box, any kind of questions about how to access um, what's being spoken about, buses, anything. If you're trying to get more people and your buses are full, I know that there's other orgs that might have space in their buses, so you can link those in the chat box. Um, again, the San Francisco March, we're starting in the Embar Embarcadero Station and then moving to the Civic Center where there'll be a large art um, uh, street mural effort. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move it along. Do I have any questions? Is there any questions, Annalisa, that are being uh, Maybe just a quick one. They have we have one that um, Marilyn is asking if there's a march happening in LA or if they meet in LA. So Lucas or Adelita, did you want to address that regarding the anchor action in San Francisco? Um, I know that there's buses from LA <laughs> coming to San Francisco, um, and I don't know Lucas if you have any other updates around that. But all the efforts happening in LA I know are mobilizing to San Francisco <laughs> yep that's right so hop on a bus in LA there will be checkpoints um, you can see the buses uh, if you go to ca.riseforclimate.org slash getting here um, the link is in the chat box and if you visit the ca.riseforclimate.org uh, website then it'll be give you all the information that you all need to know to join all your communities um, migrating up from LA up to San Francisco for the action. Yes, thank you. Great question, by the way. Um, let me go ahead and see if there's any other questions. Um, uh, I am, there's a lot coming in. I'm sorry, for, <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, so if it, and jump in, uh, Annalisa or Lucas, if you can answer any of these, because I am. Yeah, no problem. We can, we can keep it moving, and then we can come to the questions about, at our, at our Q&A section. Sure. Okay, so we're going to move it along. Um, let's go ahead. Our, our national and action highlights out of Illinois, Roberto Jesus. Are you ready? Uh, Roberto Jesus is an associate director out of the Warehouse Workers Coalition. Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited about the Chicago land action. It's happening in this town, village of Elwood, Illinois, which is about 45 uh, minutes south of Chicago. So we're uh, going off the bean path. And the reason we're doing this is because Elwood and Joliet, Illinois, which are outside of Chicago, uh, in those communities, there's a convergence of the issues of jobs, justice, and climate. This, this action really encapsulates uh, all three themes from this year's People's Climate Movement event. And why is that? You know, as many people may not know, uh, Chicagoland is the place where six out of the seven major class one railroads converge. Uh, it, because of the, the BNSF intermodal built in Elwood, Illinois is the busiest intermodal facility uh, in the entire Midwest. Because of that intermodal, and intermodal is basically a huge train yard where uh, trains uh, take off trailers and put them onto trucks. Uh, and this is, and then they go to warehouses in the local uh, communities. Uh, but because of this, uh, these particular train yards that have been built, Chicagoland is actually the third largest port community in the entire world, after Shanghai and Hong Kong. Uh, and not would an MRB trillions of dollars get moved out of our region, over three trillion, just in Joliet and Elwood over a trillion of the GD GDP is uh, uh, distributed out of that region. And why does this matter? Why is this a jobs, justice, and climate uh, issue? There's over 10,000 trucks a day that move out of this region. Diesel particulate is off the, off the radar uh, there. That is climate change. Hundreds and hundreds of trains come into the region. 
So what does it look like workers? Why is this a jobs um, issue? The major corporations and half of the Fortune 500 has major warehouses in the Joliet region, Amazon, Walmart, Ikea, Home Depot, Target, the list goes on. Uh, they employ staffing agencies, uh, contingent labor, over 60% of the workforce is non-permanent jobs, no benefits, workers suffer from wage theft, discrimination, uh, all kinds of issues really. What's happened in this area is the workers and the community members and the environmental justice community have identified these corporations, BNSF, Warren Buffett owns uh, BNSF, Jeff Bezos who owns Amazon, the Walton families who owns Walmart, they all make trillions of dollars off of this community, but they're not doing their part. They're not doing their part for the workers. They're putting our communities in debt because we're giving them too many tax breaks and they do not have green sustainable infrastructure. We're gonna demand all three things from these major entities and we are more powerful together and we can get this done together and if they don't listen to us, we will shut them down. And this is just the start of our movement that's happening in Elwood, in Joliet, Will County, in Chicagoland. And I cannot wait to have you all down there. It's gonna be a great time. And this is just the beginning of a long-term struggle for climate, jobs, and justice. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you so much. That was an amazing and powerful update out of Chicago. So, um, any, uh, so we're going to move it along. Um, national action highlights out of uh, New Jersey. Ananya Singh, our youth organizer, Sierra Student Coalition and New Jersey People's Climate March. Can uh, you take it away, Ananya? Of course, thank you so much. Okay, so my name is Ananya. I'm a youth organizer. I'm in high school right now, and I'm really, really, really excited to be a part of this action. Um, I'm plugging into my local action in Morristown, New Jersey. Um, it's one of multiple that we have going on across the state. And I'm here with Sierra Student Coalition. So Sierra Student Coalition is a student chapter of the Sierra Club, and we're supporting young people all around the country to help um, attend RISE and bring more of a youth presence because this movement is supposed to be intersectional and intergenerational. That's super important. And young people have a huge, huge stake in what's ahead of us. Um, so I really believe that we have a lot to bring to the table. Um, and so Sierra Student Coalition is helping to coordinate that a little bit. And they're also coordinating a youth presence at the Anchor Action in San Francisco. Um, and as well as supporting all these actions in other places. Yeah, so what we're doing for our action in Morristown is we're having a rally um, where we're inviting a panel of expert speakers, including um, we have a student leader, we have different groups um, that have different representations um, and different like populations and representing different communities. Um, including groups that are focused on environmental justice, groups that are focusing on green jobs, groups that are focusing on um, green infrastructure. We have a lot of huge variety of people talking and they're going to address each of the topics, climate, jobs, and justice, which is going to be really exciting. Um, and then we also have a festival afterwards, which I'm really excited for, and it's going to feature an open mic section where we're going to have young people um, bring their voices to the table and share them out for everyone and give them a platform. Um, and I'm going to be hosting that, which is going to be super fun. And we're really inviting young people to share um, any form of expression, including poetry, spoken word, songs. Um, so we're really hoping to invite them in. And we're, we have so much amazing energy already going on. I've talked to, I'm like recruiting people for that. So that's been really exciting. Um, and yeah, we're just working to make sure that there's a big youth presence um, here in Morristown and yeah, bring that to the table. It's going to be really exciting. 
Um, and I'm really glad to be a part of this. Um, our yeah, participants can support us by definitely attending, um, inviting more youth and bringing youth into an action like this. And we're also even looking for volunteers. Um, so there's a lot going on. There's a lot you can do to plug into it. And I'm just really excited for everything. Thank you, Ananya. Uh, so very proud of our youth uh, and so proud of what you're doing over there and all the youth around the nation that are mobilizing as well. Um, so much to share. I just wanted to mention Roberto, who spoke before Ananya, put in the um, chat box a link to where you can access those actions. Um, and Ananya, did you did you can put a link to anything you're organizing in the chat box as well. Um, if, if anybody has any links to share, just a reminder that that chat box is available. I also seen there was a question earlier about LA efforts. I seen a link to that in the chat box. So if anybody's wondering about LA efforts, you can scroll down. I seen a link earlier. Uh, place there uh, to access, you know, the People's Climate March in LA. So um, please look in that chat box for any links to access actions. Um, so everybody, you all heard um, the call to action uh, all over, you know, happening from California to East Coast. Um, and, you know, September 8th, you know, we're all mobilizing. We need your commitment to stand with us and the many fence line and frontline communities you've heard from. Um, right now, we're asking folks, you know, to commit, commit to choosing an event to attend and, you know, throw down, invite friends. Uh, come by sending your link here or RSVPing uh, wherever you're at whether you're in California, LA, you know, San Francisco, somewhere in between, there is a bus going to one of these places. Um, and like, as far as like, I know even for me, my buses are full and I keep get getting emails. Like, do you guys know where there's space on a bus? Um, there are spaces available. You just have to ask. And then um, someone will link you to, to a bus. Um, so just look on the RISE uh, website. They have a list of buses that still have space. Um, so uh, what we're going to ask right now, um, for those on the phone, by the way, we're going to be putting up um, a poll. Uh, and I want all those that are connected right now and tuned in to, to select an option of how you're committing uh, to be present on September 8th. Uh, how are you gonna commit to be engaged or participate? And so if you're on the phone, um, you know, I apologize, you might not have access to the poll, but if you're online, you're gonna be shown um, like a way to, to select out of, there you go. <laughs> there it is. I'm seeing it. So what action are you going to commit on, to take? Um, and you have a few options. Are you going to RSVP to uh, be present at the Rise, Climate, uh, Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice action near you? Are you going to text um, Rise California and it gives the number to receive updates? Are you going to pledge to be a climate volunteer? Um, and you can select that, or are you going to share the People's Climate March campaign video on social media, whether it be on your Facebook, an email blast, YouTube, um, or all of the above. So take a second, um, think about what you can do and, you know, participate in, in this poll, and then we're going to go ahead and after a minute or two, we're going to read the results. So please participate and engage, let us know how you're engaging. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much everybody on the call and everybody on, um, on the panelist side, on the host side of things. Um, we're really, really excited to um, have you all with us on this day. I wanted to make a quick note 
Um, our National Day of Action is September 8th, as Adelita mentioned and others mentioned. And there's a lot of activity happening, um, actually, the couple days before the 8th, as well as the Sunday following the 8th. Um, we'll talk more about what's going to happen after Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice and where people's climate movement is going um, in just a sec. But um, I just want to flag if you all are RSVPing and you go to peoplesclimate.org, um, you can find all the actions on there. Um, for California, you have the california.riseforclimate.org website where you can RSVP directly and you'll be in direct touch with folks on the team about where to show up and when and the other activities surrounding the actions. Um, but make sure that you are looking at the Action Network page where you're RSVPing. Um, when you go into the map and you type in your zip code to see what are the actions near you um, and you choose one and you click RSVP, make sure you read it. Some of these actions are happening on September 6th as a part of the Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice mobilization. Some of them are also happening on the 7th. Some of them are happening on the 9th. So we're kind of making it a long weekend of action, which is awesome because as all these folks have just mentioned, there's a huge need. There's a huge need. Um, the time is now. We have no time to waste. Um, we're, we're all really struggling and to, uh, to just survive um, in a lot of the communities that we're living in. Um, so make sure that you're RSVPing, make sure that you're paying attention to the Action Network RSVP pages that you're looking at. Um, and those pages are going to give you the most correct information about your local action. So I just wanted to quickly shout that out. Um, so make sure you're also uh, answering the poll and um, we can, we can uh, I'll pass it back to Adelita um, and others and we can go from there. Okay. <laughs> So the poll results are in, guys. Thank you for participating. Um, it looks like 65% are RSVPing for, um, to be a part of the Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice action. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Um, and then it looks like, uh, I'm just going to kind of go down. It looks like 58% are going to be sharing um, the People's Climate March campaign video on social media. Thank you very much for that too. Um, that's an excellent way to get the word out. Um, and I and it includes the link there. So please share it out. Um, and then we have 12% uh, pledging to be a climate volunteer. And we, yeah, thank you. We need volunteers. My, my goodness, I, we can't say thank you enough to our volunteers. Um, and also, you know, you'll be attending a training. Um, so please follow up with the link there, how to be a volunteer, how to sign up for that. Um, and then 31% say they're going to text RISE um, for, for the updates, to get updates and calls to action. As Annalisa mentioned, there is actions happening all the way up to the 8th and post the 8th. So, um, there's ways to stay engaged before and after um, September 8th, and we encourage you all to be engaged. And those are the results. And so thank you so much. Thank you so much for participating. It gives us a good idea how you're going to be engaged in your community where you're at. Um, so thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Annalisa. Um, thank you so much. Cool, appreciate that, Adelita. And um, I wanted to just, as we're already staring down the nose of this National Mobilization Day that all these partners have been a part of, um, you've heard from a few here, Raw House Workers from Justice, CAUSE, who's a part of National Networks, CEHA and Partnership of Working Families, Sierra Student Coalition affiliated with the Sierra Club. Um, there's so many organizations to shout out. Once again, a huge thank you to 350.org for always hosting us on Zoom um, and being amazing at all the digital magic that they make happen. Um, there's so many more organizations that have been a part of building Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice nationally in the US and globally um, across the world. And we're really, really, really heartened that folks are still having the energy um, to rally around climate and not just climate, but as our speakers have shared tonight, the many other issues that we are, um, that we are fighting for in order to survive, whether it's for workers and for the economy, whether it's for undocumented people. 
um, whether it's for young people, um, whether it's for moms um, and our other parents and grandparents. We really cannot do this without you all. We can't do it without one another. Um, I just wanted to quickly shout out some of the orgs that have been a, a part of the super dedicated team um, of and, and like the brain trust of this work, which has been SEIU and the Center for Popular Democracy, People's Action, League of Conservation Voters, Blue Green Alliance, the Climate Justice Alliance, um, Chispa, and there's there's so many more in California. We've got an amazing art partner in Culture Strike. Um, we're working with I don't know more in Indigenous communities, Poder, um, APEN, Jobs with Justice. There's uh, there's just been a, a huge outpouring of of support from our our tried and true partners since 2014, and many many new ones um, that we're still continuing to work with now over hundreds that are that are partnering both at the national level and across the nation. So really, really encourage you all to continue to make this work real and make all the strategy and planning real by, by getting out on September 8th or 6th or 7th or 9th. Um, and of course, this is not just one moment. We're not doing this um, work uh, for one day of action. We wanna make all of our efforts meaningful. We wanna make it long lasting. We wanna sustain it. We wanna sustain each other. Um, so that we can really build this future that we're all talking about that has to do with climate jobs and justice. So for People's Climate Movement, our partners, one of the ways that we're really thinking about um, moving our work forward immediately after September 8th is of course a partner with our very, very awesome um, Global Glass Grassroots Justice Alliance partners. Um, they're a convener of the many grassroots organizations that work on a multitude of issues across the U.S. It's a, an enormous alliance with a ton of power in the grassroots communities. And they will be in the Bay Area in California. They'll be hosting an entire week of action starting with September 8th called the Solidarity to Solutions Week or Soul to Soul, S-O-L to S-O-L. Um, you can find them on Facebook. Um, it's probably the easiest and I'm dropping the link now into the chat box. Um, but if folks that are in the Bay Area want to participate in that, there is also a huge need for volunteers and participants. Um, there's going to be a couple of days of direct action as well as summits with a, a variety of organizations. Um, and you can click that link to find out more information. Um, but there's also a multitude of other events that are going to be happening in the Bay Area, um, in San Francisco proper and in the area in general. You can again go to the California website, the Rise for Climate website. There's an event section that I'll drop in now. And that's where you can check out the calendar of the many actions that range from film screening, screenings, um, to prayer vigils, to art builds, um, to policy summits. So those are really gonna be awesome spaces for you all to participate in, get more information if you're in the Bay. If you're not in the Bay, definitely keep an eye out on social media. Everyone's using the hashtag rise for climate four is spelled out it's not the number rise for climate um, and you can check out all the action online and participate that way um, equally important um, a big moment why we're organizing on september 8th is the global climate action summit um, our goal and our vision is really to make sure that these actions are adding pressure to the summit where um, it has been convened by Governor Brown in California and some other partners as well. Um, but the goal is to attract subnational leaders from across the nation and that they're meant to talk about their bold climate plans. And we want to make sure that they know that our people across the communities and across the, the many organizations in the nation are absolutely ready, prepared, they understand what this means and that we want to see bold climate leadership, some real leadership that we can um, make sure serves our communities in the way that is going to be, as Lucas was saying before, an economy that works for everybody, um, an environment that works for everybody, um, and doesn't compromise um, jobs or justice in, in lieu of climate and vice versa and all around. Um, so the Global Climate Action Summit is happening in San Francisco from September 12th to 14th. There are um, officially affiliated um, activities that are happening as a part of that summit. Um, there's a link in that same uh, California, sorry, ca.riseforclimate.org link that I dropped into the chat box. If you want to see more of those affiliate events, just go there and there's a link that will take you to those events um, that are organized by this, uh, the conveners of the summit. Um, but as I mentioned, this is really our, our moment um, is, is the highlight. Our partners' activities are the highlight. We really want to make sure that we are um, pressuring our elected officials um, to take their leadership to the next level. 
um, and whatever way that looks like for the nation, but um, most importantly, at the local level. This year is really about local level action. Um, so that's a, one of the ways that you can all engage in, in thinking about this weekend, um, this upcoming weekend um, of September 8th, Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice, and particularly for those of us that are in the Bay Area. Beyond this week of action and weekend of action, we of course have a very, very important marker coming up, which is the November midterms. Um, many states have been having primaries since early on in the year, and we wanna to continue to keep up the pressure and momentum and encourage folks to be really thinking about C3 voter engagement. Um, we wanna make sure that our, again, our elected officials are hearing our message. Um, about what it means to take bold leadership and bold action. Um, so we will be having a, um, a voter engagement call. We're gonna be kicking it off um, just after the summit ends on September 17th. That call is going to be hosted by our organizing director at People's Climate Movement. Her name is Lindsay Crowder and um, we'll be sending a more official RSVP link, but for now, you all can save the date for September 17th at 8 p.m. Eastern and we'll be um, helping to gather all the many folks that have volunteered, gather all the many folks that have been a part of these Rise for Climate Jobs and Justice actions across the nation, and really think about how we can critically build our power and show it at the ballot box. Um, as many of y'all may be seeing in some of our communications and emails, um, our work is, again, not to just take this march or this moment of action, but to make sure that we're in the streets, that we're in the ballot box, and that we're doing even more beyond that. So right now our markers are September, November, but people's climate movement, we are planning to remain strong. We're planning to remain um, connected. Early we were on a call today with some of our core partners and that was a huge piece of what we all spoke about together was really saying like, look, we, we've got to take these relationships that we're building, cross movement, cross sector, cross gender, cross age, and we must continue to work together if we're going to win. And that is our goal. We've got to win. We've got to win on climate action this year, next year, and in the many important and critically um, politically important years to come. So with that, I will pass it back to Adelita and to all of you um, so we can um, answer any last lingering questions before this big day of action. Um, thank you all so much again for being on the call. Thank you so much for um, being with us throughout this whole process. Again, we just could not do without you. And um, we're so thankful that you're staying in this fight with us. Thank you, Annalisa. Uh, very powerful message. So remember, September 17th, mark your calendars for that. Um, any final questions, uh, please submit them in the chat box. I did see a, a pretty urgent request for volunteers kind of I think I seen they need 400 volunteers for um, September 8th. So uh, if you are listening and tuning in and you think you want to be a volunteer or you want to recruit volunteers, there is a high need for the March. And so please click on the link there. Um, I also see another question about uh, details on the 9-11 Take It Roots Summit workshop. Uh, I don't, does anybody know any? Yeah. Yes, um, I see somebody dropped in the uh, Soul to Soul Week of Action description link. Please do click there. That'll take you to all the information you need to know. Um, the, the details about the workshops itself, if you click through that link, you can see them. Um, there'll be some breakout groups. It's gonna be a full day and it's gonna be at La Raza Park. Um, in San Francisco. So if you all are interested in being a part of that, that's going to go from about, um, I believe, 930 or so in the morning um, into well into the evening. The closing ceremony will end at about 730 p.m. Um, but if you all are interested in um, and being a part of those workshops, um, I think right now, to be honest, the Facebook page is going to be the best, um, the best spot to do that, to, to check out some of the workshop details. If you go to this main Facebook link here that I'm dropping in now, um, it'll actually list out every single day. Um, if you go into the description box, there'll be a specific Facebook link for September 11th, um, and that is right here. And that will give you the current draft agenda of the Soul to Soul 
um, summit, which is open to everybody. It's a come one, come all day of, um, again, like art and blessings and food, um, workshops. There'll be some topics as such, discussed such as self-determination, protecting Mother Earth, just transition strategies, and energy democracy pathways. There also will be some music involved. Um, so it's gonna be a really great day and we definitely hope to see you on the Bay out there. Thank you, Annalisa. Um, any last minute questions? Let's keep this momentum going, everybody. You know, I, I feel a lot of strong energy from California. I feel it from the East Coast too. It doesn't end September 8th. We got to keep this momentum going. And so thank you all. Um, I don't see any last minute questions. I do see a bunch of links uh, getting dropped in there. So please click on the links. Um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and pass it back over to you, Annalisa, for any last minute comments. Yeah, thank you so much, Adelita. And thank you, everybody, for getting on, especially in this last crush before the holiday weekend i'm sure folks are eager to jump into hopefully some um, plans for rest relaxation and rejuvenation so last reminder is before we let you all um, dissolve into the night um, i want to make sure that again folks are looking at the people's climate movement take action page um, we have uh, the map of the actions in that section of our website. So again, you know, it's going to be really important that we're, we're having all folks uh, be really clear about where they can find action information. I've been getting us some emails about a lack of clarity about details. So check out peoplesclimate.org slash rise. You can find everything there again as well. RiseForClimate.org has a bunch of information too. And our goal is to get you all to get commit to bringing five friends with you to this action, get them all to sign up on Action Network um, and making sure that we're supporting this great work. If you all are looking for any last minute resources like posters or um, flyers or graphics to share on social media, um, the buzz building never ends until the moment that the action is over. So please make sure that you're going to peoplesclimate.org slash resource and you can um, see the various toolkits that we have linked, which are for partners. If you want to have, if you're from an organization that has a formal listserv um, or a network of other organizations, check out that toolkit. It'll give you all the sample emails and Facebook posts and tweets um, and graphics that you might need in both English and Spanish. It also has um, a very awesome compiled uh, folder of artwork, um, people's comment posters that are able to be manipulated so that you can print them out or you can, um, you can add your own information to it or you can write it in um, if you have the time and ability to do that. Um, and there's also some really great last minute links in our organizing toolkit, press release, press advisory templates, um, a, a really great photography guide, um, some strategies and advice for speaking with the media for folks um, that are on that side of the action building. Um, if you're looking to engage your local media to your action, this coming week is definitely the time to start pitching. So you want to go to the organizing toolkit and in the around like I think the ninth page or so there's a whole list of resources linked um, that should be helpful in your last couple of days as you're prepping for your actions. Um, again, I just wanted to say a final thank you to everybody on the call, a huge round of applause to Roberto, to Lucas, to Ananya, to Adelita for, for being an amazing facilitator, um, and for you all for just leading all the actions so powerfully and with the heart of our people in mind. I'm really, really excited to count you as People's Climate Movement partners. Um, a huge thank you to 350.org as always for Again, the many technical aspects of this work that you all run and the digital aspects for the, for the call tonight. Um, we could not do this without you either. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and close it off. A huge appreciation once again. This is the last moment. Spread the word, get all your people to come, sign up RSVP, contact us if you need anything. We'll send a follow-up email very shortly. Um, and with that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the evening, a wonderful weekend celebrating Labor Day and the labor movement, who is a huge partner and makes so much of this work possible. Yes, Roberto. Um, and, um, uh, and why we do this work. Um, enjoy it. Remember and, um, and pay homage to the folks that made this possible. 
And we will see you when? September 8th. Um, or September 6th, or September 7th, or September 9th. <laughs> Check the action arc for details. We will see you in the streets, though. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening.